Hey, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run an 18 volt pedal with a 9 volt supply. No, wait, I'm going to show you two ways to run an 18 volt pedal with a 9 volt supply. So I've got this old 535Q Crybaby. It's the early model and it's designed to run on 18 volts. But it's kind of a drag needing a separate supply for this one pedal. And those multi-voltage pedal board supplies, they're quite expensive. Plus if, like me, you only have just the one 18 volt pedal, they're completely overkill. The ones I've seen uh, can source something like half an amp of current. But this pedal draws less than four milliamps. Traditionally, the way to boost the voltage up from a DC supply is with a circuit called a charge pump. And they've been used in audio circuits for a long time. In fact, I used to work for a manufacturer here in Australia called Mayton, and their acoustic guitar preamps have actually run on three volts from two AA batteries since, I don't know, the mid 90s. But that preamp's actually getting 14 volts. Something like half the board space of the AP5 preamp in my Mayton is taken up with a discrete charge pump circuit. But of course, these days, things are quite a bit simpler. Uh, this is, I don't know if you can see it, it's a max 1044 uh, voltage converter IC, and it can be configured in several different ways. But for this, of course, we'll set it up as a voltage doubler. So here's the circuit straight from the data sheet. Uh, and as you can see, I've more or less copied it. But to make it work in our context, the first thing I'll do is connect pin one, the boost pin, to the nine volt input. This raises the switching speed of the chip from three and a half kilohertz up to 27 and a half kilohertz and out of the audio spectrum. This does reduce its efficiency, but without that, there's a good chance you'll hear a high pitched three and a half K whining noise through your rig. That's not good. The next thing we have to do is limit the input to nine volts or thereabouts. With a voltage doubler, you've got to imagine if someone accidentally plugged in, say, an 18 volt supply, then your pedal is going to get 36 volts, and that's almost certainly going to do some damage. Even if plug someone accidentally plugged in, say, an unregulated 9 volt DC wall wart, then with such a low current consumption, like with this pedal, it might be seeing as much as 14, 13, 14 volts, and doubling this, well, yeah, that could be trouble as well. With this particular charge pump, the MAX 1044, there's a more pressing reason to ensure the input stays at that nine or below that nine volt level. And that's because the IC itself is only rated to 10 and a half volts. So with the 9.1 volt Zener diode, we know the input will never get too high because any voltage higher than this, the diode starts, uh, starts to conduct and the excess is shunted to earth. Of course, there's only so much current the Zener can handle. This one's rated to uh, one watt, I think. Uh, so this resistor here is added to limit that current if it's called on to do its thing. Uh, and finally, I've also put a reverse polarity protection diode up front because for some reason, this pedal doesn't have one. Seems a strange oversight, but uh, as is, there's nothing protecting the circuit from accidentally using a DC wall wart with the jack reversed, or perhaps a nine volt AC supply by mistake. For what it's worth, if you do have this particular pedal and you don't want to necessarily mod it with a charge pump or whatever, I'd recommend at least thinking about putting in a protection diode. Um, if you remove this 100 ohm resistor here, um, you can actually put both the resistor and the diode back into that same spot. So here's my finished circuit. I've also put together a little strip board layout. It's about three centimeters by one and a half centimeters. It's quite small. This is the reverse view or the bottom view of the tracks. Um, I've got it also on the breadboard um, and I've got my 9 volt power supply hooked up or set to 9 volts I should say and the output is well it's only 16 volts so what's happened to those 2 volts 
Well, there's a couple of reasons when it get, not getting 18 volts out of this. The first is that the protection diode um, has a voltage drop of about a half a volt across it, so the max 1044 is really only doubling eight and a half volts. But then we lose another half volt for each of these diodes on the output. And if we look at the uh, original circuit from the uh, data sheet, it's told us to expect that here with uh, two times the voltage, uh, the input voltage minus twice the voltage drop or the diode's uh, forward voltage. But honestly, 16 volts will work just fine for an 18 volt pedal. If you really want 18 volts, uh, you could replace these diodes with Schottky diodes. Um, I've also mentioned another way, in fact this is an old trick from the DIY stomp box community. Uh, you can use a, a, a P-channel MOSFET, the drain and source from a P-channel MOSFET, and as long as you pull the gain down to earth, uh, this will act as a protection diode, very well as a protection diode. Its forward voltage will be very close to zero. So now, let me crank this power supply. Uh, where are we? 10 volts, 11, there's 12 volts. Uh, 12 volts on the input, there's our voltage drop. Uh, but now this Zener diode is starting to conduct because we're above 9.1 volts and it's protecting the 1044, it's holding its input well below that 10.5 volt threshold. In fact, I could crank that even further. This Zener will start to get a bit warm and so will this uh, current limiting resistor, but it should handle even up to as much as 18 volts. I was just going to go ahead and make this little circuit and put it in the pedal. Um, as long as that switching frequency is up and out of the audio range, the MAX 1044 works really well. A voltage doubler is also great if you need a bit more headroom from, say, an onboard bass preamp, but you don't have the space for that second battery. Uh, or if you're running guitar pedals in an effects loop and they're getting more like line level instead of instrument level and again headrooms an issue just make sure your circuit can handle 18 volts uh, I'll give you an example a lot of old boss pedals have their four and a half volt bias decoupled with 6.3 volt caps so obviously with an 18 volt supply that bias voltage jumps up to 9 volt and those caps are going to be toast so find a schematic, find a spec sheet, contact the manufacturer, or at the very least, go over the board thoroughly looking for voltage sensitive parts. As I mentioned, I'll put this schematic and the layout and everything in a PDF on my website, so check it out. But for this pedal, I've decided to take a different approach, a, a more modern approach, I guess. This is a DC to DC boost converter. This one uses the MT3608IC which is that little tiny black chip right there and it'll take as little as 2 volts at its input up to as much as 28 volts on its output. It just depends uh, where you set this little trim pot. They aren't completely idiot proof. They are designed to boost uh, and because of this you have to keep the input voltage lower than whatever you've set the output to. But aside from this, they're super simple to use. They'll happily source way more current than a guitar pedal is ever likely to draw. And they're incredibly cheap. Uh, believe it or not, uh, you can buy these on eBay, Amazon, AliExpress for about a dollar. Uh, and that's including postage. The only other precaution really is to set the output voltage while the module is still on the bench before you install it. And that's just because uh, there's no way of telling where it's set straight out of the factory. This is a multi-turn trim pot. Um, so that's 9 volts there now. And if I turn this anti-clockwise, we can get the, eight, the output up to... That's a bit fiddly. Uh, we can get the output up to 17. And... Okay, so there's... 18 volts and check this out if I change the input voltage 9 8 7 6 5 4 even with 4 volts at its input it's still putting out 18 volts in fact 3 volts 
let's go down to the threshold of 2 volts if I go there's 1.9 1.8 1.7 and there it is it's basically switched off I'll also put a 16 volt zener up front and a 100 ohm resistor and a polarity protection diode just to make sure the input of this doesn't get higher than the 18 volt that we've set um, so here's one I prepared earlier I can mount the zener straight on the board itself and for the resistor and protection diode I'm just going to put them in line and uh, heat shrink them as a flying lead. So with only, what was it, a 4 or 5 milliamp current draw from the pedal, I know this little guy's not going to get hot in operation, so I'm going to just heat shrink the whole thing and there's a bit of space here. I'll double sided tape that in place uh, and then I can just hook the wires up. I've just got to find an earth somewhere, there's plenty to choose. Um, and then I can patch the input and output of the uh, module where I've removed this 100 ohm resistor. Uh, then all I have to do is uh, just remove one of these battery clips. I only need 9 volts obviously um, and because they're wired in series because of that I can just cut these, these away and then just short the two leads and we'll end up with 9 volts going to the input of the board. So there you go, all installed. This uh, battery's not brand new, it's about 8.2 volts, but the pedal's getting 18. So there's two ways to run an 18 volt pedal from a 9 volt supply. With a max 1044, you'll have to round up all the parts, which will add up to, I don't know, 10 bucks or something. And of course, you'll have to put them all together in that fiddly little circuit. On the other hand, the MT3608 module is super cheap. It's very simple to use but nowhere near as efficient. With a wall wart supply, it doesn't make any difference, of course, but if you do plan to use the pedal with a battery from time to time, then it won't last as long as with the uh, 1044 charge pump circuit. In fairness, though, the MT3608 is really designed for higher current applications. There is one other nagging little problem if I use this pedal with a battery. You might have already worked it out. Well, when you run a regular pedal from a battery, as the battery runs down, its voltage drops. The pedal starts to lose headroom or it goes off bias or whatever. And if you know that pedal, well, you can start to hear that happening. With a lot of pedals, the status LED will also start to dim slightly. But with this pedal, of course, there is no status LED for a start. But more so, with the DC-DC converter that's in there now, there's no audible warning the battery's going to get uh, is that the battery's getting low either. And that's because that clever little module will hold the pedal at 18 volts and it'll sound completely normal until the battery is almost completely flat at, I don't know, 2 volts or whatever. Then it will just suddenly switch off. So in the second half of this two-part video, I'm going to be installing a status light for starters in this crybaby. But I'm also going to show you a simple circuit that makes the status LED change colour when the battery has dropped past a certain voltage. That way not only can you see when the effect is switched in, but also when the battery needs to be replaced. So if that sounds like something you're into, give me a like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you then.